Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video is all about why the UK climate is so variable and changes on a daily basis. Now, as always, there's a link in the description box below for the accompanying worksheets to this video. If you yourself are studying GCSE Geography and you're either learning from home, you've by been directed to complete this lesson or if you are just making some nice revision notes for your upcoming examinations so like I said they're in the description box below completely free okay so there's a link there if you want to access them now today we're thinking about the UK and our lovely climate our temperature and precipitation throughout the year and the UK has actually got a climate which is very variable. And when I say variable, I mean it changes a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. The UK can experience quite cool summers as well as mild winters. And our precipitation does spread very evenly throughout the year. We get quite consistent precipitation in the UK. Now, when it comes to describing our climate, the UK has something known as a temperate climate. And that means that our climate is mild without extremes in terms of temperature and precipitation. And if we first of all think about the location of the UK and why potentially our climate is so variable. So the UK is located within Europe in the Northern Hemisphere and in relation to our location, the UK is not very close in terms of its proximity to the equator, nor are we very close to the poles, in this case, the, the Northern Pole. So we are something which is described as a mid-latitude location. And because we are this mid-latitude location, we are between the, the North Pole and the polar region and the equator, we would describe ourselves as being mid-latitude, we're in the middle. And given that we are in this mid-latitude position, the UK is influenced uh, predominantly by westerly winds and low pressure systems coming in from the ocean. And as a result of that, that gives us this temperate climate. Now the UK has four distinct climate regions. So within the UK, we can then split up the UK into those four climate regions. And this is where if you're working on the worksheets, you're going to draw over that lovely UK map that you've been provided. So in terms of the northeast of the UK, that particular region will experience cold winters and cool summers. Whereas the southeast of the UK will experience cold winters, but warm summers. The southwest of the UK will experience mild winters, but warm summers. And the northwest will um, experience mild winters and cool summers. And these are our four distinct climate regions. Now, we do have a number of factors that influence our weather conditions in the UK and that's what we're going to be looking at and learning about today and what I'm going to summarise in this video for you. So we're going to start with the first factor that influences the UK's climate and that is ocean currents. Now when it comes to ocean currents I'm talking here about a circulation of movement of water um, across the world and we call them ocean currents. Now in the UK we are again in that mid-latitude position so we are influenced um, by a warm current and relatively warm waters known as the North Atlantic Drift. And this particular warm ocean current is responsible for what we call moderating the climate of Western Europe. And what I mean by that is that it draws up warm water from the equator towards the northern hemisphere, towards the UK. So that then means that our winters are not as brisk and as cold as they would be um, 
if that ocean current wasn't delivering that warm water towards us. So without that warm North Atlantic drift, the UK and many other places in Europe actually would be as cold as Canada in terms of their climate because we are at the same latitude as some of these locations. But because of that warm ocean current being drawn up from the equator, we are actually um, quite mild in terms of our temperature, which is very nice. Now, the second factor that influences our climate is our distance from the equator. And we would also refer to this as the, the latitude, our latitude location on the planet. Now, when we have obviously our sun sending uh, solar radiation, sunlight towards our planet, we are going to have what we call a more concentrated um, solar radiation level at the equator. And that's because obviously the equator receives the most sunlight on our planet and has more direct sunlight. So at the equator, we have more concentrated sunlight. Whereas uh, as we go further north and south uh, away from the equator, we're starting to obviously have a lower concentration of solar radiation, which then influences the temperature. And by the time you get to your poles, your poles have uh, more atmosphere for that solar radiation to actually travel through. And therefore, by the time it reaches the poles, it's lost a lot of its energy. So it has what we call a low angle of incoming sunlight. What that effectively means is, is that the temperatures drop the further you are away from the equator. So like I said before, the UK is a mid-latitude location. We are not very close to the equator and therefore our temperatures are not very extreme or warm due to our distance from the equator. Now, third factor we call, um, in a geography sense, we call this altitude, but in a in a very basic term, this means height above sea level. So we have a lot of mountainous regions in the UK, the Pennines, Ben Nevis, Snowdon in Wales. And our altitude and that height above sea level will, will influence the temperature of various regions. So any locations that are at what we call a higher altitude, they are higher elevated areas above sea level, they will experience colder temperatures than those that are uh, just on the sea level or just slightly above it. So typically this is why your mountainous regions like Ben Nevis in Scotland or Snowdonia in Wales, um, the summit, potentially the top of the mountain, will sometimes be snowy. And that is because the temperature at the summit of the mountain, because it's so high above sea level, the temperature is actually a lot colder. So typically, temperatures usually decrease by one degree Celsius for every 100 meters in altitude. So if you climb 100 meters above sea level, you're going to drop one degree Celsius in temperature on average in terms of the climate. So this mainly influences those regions in the UK that are close to any mountains. Now, our fourth factor we're going to look at today is something called prevailing winds, or some people refer to them as air masses. Now, what a prevailing wind is, is it's the most dominant wind direction, the strongest wind direction moving towards an area. And that wind will have a certain temperature associated with it. So the temperature of the wind and the amount of precipitation uh, the area receives does depend on where the air has actually travelled from on our planet. So when we're actually looking at where the air has come from, this helps us to explain the characteristics of the weather conditions that we are experiencing. So like I said, these prevailing winds, these air masses, these are huge bodies of air with um, similar characteristics and we call them air masses. So when it comes to air masses and their influence on the UK, because the UK is a mid-latitude location, we can be influenced by six different air masses or prevailing winds. So if we start uh, at the very north of the UK, uh, the first air mass that can influence the UK is what we call the Arctic Maritime Air Mass. 
Arctic meaning coming from the poles and maritime meaning that it is travelled over a body of water. Now, your Arctic maritime air mass will typically come from the Arctic, that's why it's called the Arctic maritime air mass, and this type of air mass or prevailing wind will bring us wet, cold air, and that typically will bring us snow in winter and associate those lovely weather conditions with the Arctic being very cold. Now, if we move around in a clockwise direction then, our second air mass to influence the UK is your polar continental air mass. Again, polar because it's travelled from the poles, but continental this time because it has travelled over land to reach the UK. So this particular air mass would typically travel from Central Europe and it will be bringing us this hot air, uh, bringing us dry summers. But in potentially in winter, the air would be a lot colder and bring us snow instead. Now again, moving around in a clockwise direction, we then have got a tropical continental air mass that can influence the UK. And again, tropical because it's travelled from the tropics, uh, those warmer areas, close proximity to the equator, and it's travelled over land, and that's why we call it continental. So this typical air mass would come from probably North Africa, and it would bring us hot, dry air, which brings us that lovely hot weather in summer. Then we've got our tropical maritime air mass, again tropical because it's travelled from the tropics, proximity uh, very close by to the equator and maritime because it has travelled over a body of water. And the tropical maritime air mass will typically travel over the Atlantic Ocean and that warm moist air will bring us clouds unfortunately um, due to condensation taking place which means we will experience some precipitation um, but relatively mild weather conditions in terms of the temperature because it is from the tropics. We then have our next air mass called a returning polar maritime air mass. And this air mass would travel from Greenland um, or the Arctic via the North Atlantic. So re return back to us, if you like. And this moist, mild and very unstable air from the polar maritime uh, would actually bring us cloudy weather again because it's traveled over the ocean and that will bring us uh, some rain showers and some precipitation unfortunately. And then finally our last air mass to influence the UK is known as your polar maritime air mass. Again polar because it's traveled from the poles and maritime because it's traveled over the uh, ocean or body of water. So your polar maritime air mass will travel over Greenland or the Arctic um, because it's a maritime air mass and this uh, air mass is usually wet cold air and that does bring us cold very showery weather conditions which might not be very nice. So on your worksheets you have got a box with the UK stuck in the middle of it and um, in case it wasn't clear, what really you should have now is um, all those air masses that affect the UK and potentially you might have gone into further detail about uh, where they travel from and what type of weather conditions they bring. So that should then be on your worksheet if you are following along and creating those worksheets um, while watching these videos. Now, fifth and final. Uh, factor that influences the UK's climate and, and that is distance from the sea. Now oceans do heat up, these large bodies of water, they heat up and cool down much uh, slower than land does and what this means is is that coastal locations and as obviously the UK is an island we have a lot of coastal locations, these locations will um, tend to be typically cooler in summer and warmer in winter. So in summer, like I said, a lot of a cooler temperature. So this is exactly what you can see on this Met Office Choropleth map here. So we can see those coastal regions in summer as a typical average tend to be a lot cooler and therefore inland is warmer. Uh, and then in comparison, our coastal areas tend to be a little bit warmer in winter 
meaning those inland areas are a little bit colder. So again, we can see that on this Met Office map here with your winter average conditions. So nice place to live on the coastline in winter because it's a little bit warmer and that might just be by a degree or so. So everyone, that literally concludes why the UK climate is so variable and the various factors that influence our climate. So once again, thank you very much for watching my video. If you're finding them useful, please make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.